Good evening. Again, my name is Paul Walker, and as Father mentioned, I am both the Director of Youth Ministry here at St. Louis Church and the Director of Admissions and Marketing for St. Louis School. My wife, Heather, and my daughter, Mary Elise, and I are parishioners here at St. Louis, and my daughter is in the fifth grade here at, at the school. But today I stand before you not as an employee of the church or the school, but as a fellow parishioner. As Father mentioned, I'm here to speak to you about the Diocesan United in Faith Capital Campaign and how this campaign will benefit both the Diocese of Memphis and us here at St. Louis Parish. This United in Faith campaign has an overall diocesan goal of $22 million. This capital campaign will be used for the diocese to provide long-term funding for seminarians, the diaconate, retired priests, and for youth and young adult ministry. The campaign will also infuse much needed funds into parishes, enabling capital, com uh, capital projects and ministry support. The target goal for each parish does include their 20 2022 Catholic annual appeal. So you won't have to do this again for the annual appeal this year. Our target goal here at St. Louis for the United in Faith Capital Campaign is $2,066,000. Once we surpass our annual Catholic Appeal goal of $380,000, 50% of the remaining collected funds up to our target will return here into the parish at St. Louis. And so I'm here today to let you know our plans for those funds. If you know me at all, if you know me well, you'll be surprised that I'm about to make a baseball reference because I just don't particularly care for the sport of baseball. I do, however, love a good sports movie, and one of the best of them is Field of Dreams. Probably the most iconic quote from this movie is whispered by Shoeless Joe Jackson to Kevin Costner's character, Ray Kinsella. If you build it, he will come. Ray Kinsella couldn't shake the voice in his head. If you build it, he will come. There was something Ray needed to do, but he couldn't quite put his finger on what that was. And so, with a little help from James Earl Jones and some others along the way, Ray took a leap of faith and he built the baseball field of his dreams right there in the middle of his Iowa cornfield. The 1919 Chicago White Sox and other baseball legends would come back from the grave to play on that field. They would laugh and joke. They would jump, shout, run, and play. They would live again. If Ray would just build it, the field of their dreams and his, they would come. Good movie, nice idea, imperfect mentality. You see, sadly, today, many, many of today's churches have embraced this field of dreams ideal. If we could just build the perfect field of their dreams, the people will come. Well, I've been a part of St. Louis Parish and School for almost 25 years now. I have served under five of St. Louis's six pastors in that time. I have watched the physical footprint and the landscape of this campus change in those 25 years. And I have noticed one thing, St. Louis Church and School is not a build it and they will come parish. St. Louis Parish is a let's build it because they've come parish. You want proof? When we built the Clunan Center in 1997, we didn't build it in hopes of people joining the parish. We built it because thousands of families were already here. When we added the second gymnasium in 1999, we weren't hoping for more basketball and volleyball teams. We were already bursting at the seams with those teams. When we opened our Early Childhood Center in 2010, we didn't cross our fingers and hope there was a need. We had mile-long waiting lists before the doors ever opened. When we built the junior high wing of the school in 2014, we didn't, we didn't build it in hopes of attracting junior high students. We built it because our school hallways were overflowing with students. And finally, when we built the St. John Paul II Youth Ministry Center in 2015, we weren't hoping that junior high and high school youth would suddenly start showing up on a Sunday. We built it because hundreds of youth had grown our youth ministry so large, we had outgrown our gymnasium. No, we are not a build it and they will come campus. 
So now, here we are in 2022 with another great problem. Our ministries continue to build. This time, it's our music ministry. Did you know that we have five choirs now at St. Louis? Under the direction of our new director of music, Dr. Scott Elsholtz, who's upstairs tonight, we now have our Parish Sunday Choir, the Schola Cantorum, the Resurrection Choir, the Contemporary Choir, and the St. Cecilia Children's Choir. And these choirs continue to grow each week. So what's the problem? We've quickly, in just a few short months, outgrown our choir loft. Our current choir loft has a maximum capacity of 24 people. If any of you had the incredible joy of being at Lessons and Carols in December, you saw that when we combined just three of those choirs, it was nearly impossible. They have come, and so we must build. Part of our parish portion for the United in Faith campaign will be used to expand our existing choir loft by bringing it forward. This will allow for a new loft capacity of 49 people. Plus, it will permit room for an instrumentalists. This plan also includes purchasing an acoustic chamber grand piano to replace the digital one we now have in the loft. Finally, a real piano in our beautiful church. The design of the new loft will keep the integrity and the beauty of our current nave. Our very own parishioner, Victor Buckholtz, who is the architect who designed this beautiful renovation you see behind me and around you, has also designed the new expansion of the choir loft. And if you'd like to see his initial design, please visit the Narthex after mass and it's on an easel. The expansion of the loft will also include completing the organ, which we originally installed in 1999. When then Father Sarton installed the organ, it was always with the understanding that we would one day complete it. And that day is here. So what does it mean to complete the organ? It means that we will add the remaining pipes, which will help to revoice our organ. No, adding pipes will not make it louder. It will make the sound warmer. It will give it more foundation and bass with much softer edges and greater depth. In short, it will make Dr. Scott sound even more amazing each Sunday than he already does. Our church building sits smack in the middle of our campus and everything we do on this campus happens around this church. This is fitting since what happens in this church should be our center, our focus of and all that we do each day. So enhancing the worship of Christ that happens each Sunday in this building by purposely enhancing our music ministries is a wise and worthy use of our capital campaign dollars. But that's not all. Our priest residence is in great need of some tender loving care. We purchased and renovated our current rectory in 1996 and we've had made no major improvements to it since. Sure, we've made some minor repairs over the years but there have been no upgrades and no replacement of appliances since. I've seen it, it's, it's bad. We don't need to renovate the rectory in hope of more priests, they're already here. It's not a build it and they will come moment. This is a moment to show our priests what a priority they are in our lives. We are blessed to have four priests at St. Louis Parish. This is extremely rare to have that many priests in one parish. And we are incredibly blessed to have Father Keith, Father Jens, Father Michael, and Father Joe here at St. Louis. There's much work to be done in our rectory from renovating the kitchen and replacing the rusted out non-working appliances to renovated, renovating bathrooms and repairing unusable and cracked bathtubs. One thing I know for certain about St. Louis Parish is that we've always taken care of our priests. Dozens and dozens and dozens of priests and seminarians have come and gone over the years, and they've made that rectory their home. As good as our parish is to our priests, we have forgotten over the last two decades to take care of their home. These men have given their lives to God, to the church, to you, and to me. And it's our job to take care of these incredible men who bring Jesus Christ in the Eucharist every single day at St. Louis. No, our priests aren't asking for fancy upgrades and extravagant living, but a consistently working refrigerator, stove, and bathtub seem like a nice perk that we could offer them. 
Our capital campaign, with your help, will provide these much needed upgrades to our priests in their home here at St. Louis. And finally, we hope to use funds from this campaign to install a walking track around our athletic complex. This has been a talked about and dreamed about plan for about 12 years. And now with your help, it can become reality. My family and I have chosen St. Louis Parish and School because here we are family with all of you. This is where my wife and I, like many of you, have chosen to raise our children. When you step foot on this campus, a sense of family surrounds you. Peek at our athletic fields and playgrounds on a fall evening or a spring afternoon. It's teeming with youth at football practice, soccer ball practice, baseball practice, or lacrosse practice. The joyful squealing on the playground can be heard from one corner of campus to the other. Parents push strollers around every field as they await for practice to end. Build it and they will come? Nope, they're already here. Our hope is to install a walking track that can be used throughout the days by all ages. Perhaps it will even inspire people like me to get out there and get in my daily steps. At St. Louis Parish, we are blessed indeed. There's no doubt. We have a campus that is alive with activity from sunup to sundown. We truly minister and provide for people of all ages at St. Louis. And now we are blessed to have the opportunity to make this campus even better. You'll have an opportunity in a couple of weeks to join us in this United in Faith capital campaign with your pledge. We hope that you and your family will prayerfully consider being a part of making our diocese and our parish stronger and better than ever. Thank you to Father Keith for your leadership, your vision, your love of the people of St. Louis, and for your support of this capital campaign. Please take a moment at the end of Mass again to look at the rendering in the narthex of the choir loft. Also, Dr. Scott, who's upstairs in the choir loft, invites anyone after Mass to come upstairs and see our current loft, and he's happy to answer any questions you have about our music ministries here at St. Louis. But be careful, he may try to sign you up for one of those five choirs. No, we are certainly not a build it and they will come parish. You've come to St. Louis now for six decades, and our parish continues to grow each year. So, St. Louis, let's not build it so they'll come. Together, let's build it because they've come. Thank you.